That's the part of the oh, desk. No. It looked like a door. <laughs> I'm at the library. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Hope nobody starts screaming in the next room like they did last time. <laughs> no, all the rooms it around me seem quiet. to be empty. They all seem empty today, so I, um, that that could be all good. Right. Yeah. All right, we we are live, everyone. Shalom, our brothers and sisters on Facebook watching. All right, so we are doing part two of today's study, Ayub, Job chapter nine, and Sister Sh Shushana is going to start us off. So here we go. Yep, I got my reading glasses on today. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And we are recording. There we go. And Ayub answered and said, truly, I know it is so. But how is man right with Elohim? Is one wish, if one desired to dispute with him, he would not answer him one time out of a thousand. Wise in heart and potent of power, who has hardened himself against him? And is at peace. He who removes mountains and they do not know it, when he overturns them in his displeasure, who shakes the earth out of its place and its columns tremble, who commands his sun and it does not rise, and he seals up the stars, stretching out the heavens by himself and treading upon the waves of the sea. Who made Ash, Kassel, and Kima, and the rooms of the south? Who performed great and unsearchable deeds and innumerable wonders? Look, he goes by me, and I do not see, and he moves past, and I do not discern him. Look, he snatches away. Who brings it back? Who says to him, what are you doing? Aloha does not turn back his displeasure. The helpers of pride stoop under him. How much less would I answer him? Choose my words with him. For though I were righteous, I would not answer him. I pray to him for my right ruling. Though I had called and he answered me, I would not believe that he was listening to my voice for he crushes me with a storm and has multiplied my wounds for no cause. Okay, would you like me? Dennis, yeah. He does not allow me in my breath, but fills me with bitterness. If I speak of power, look, he is mighty. And if of right ruling, who sets me in that a time? If I am righteous, my mouth would declare me wrong. Am I perfect? It would declare me perverse. Am I perfect? Do I not know my own being? I despise my life. It is all the same. Therefore, I say, he destroys the perfect and the wrong. If the scourge slays suddenly, he laughs at the trial of the innocent. Earth has been given into the land, into the hand of the wrong. He covers the faces of its judges. If it is not he, then who is it? My days have become swifter than a runner. They have fled. They have not seen Job. Good. They have passed by like swift ships, like an eagle swooping on its prey. If I say, let me forget my complaint, let me put off my sad face, and let me smile, uh, I shall be afraid of all my sufferings. I know that you do not hold me innocent. If I am wrong, why should I labor in vain? If I wash myself with snow water and cleanse my hands with soap, then you would plunge me into a ditch, and my garments shall abhor me. For he is not a man as I am that I answer him and he came he, and we come together into right room. There is no mediator between us to lay his hand upon his upon us both. Let him take his rod away from me 
to let his dread frighten me. Then I would speak and not fear him, for I am not so within myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I noticed, and um, I'm kind of surprised by this Bible, is that every time I heard Brother Dennis in his translation, it says perfect. This Catholic Bible actually has blameless. So, I was bring that up. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that the Catholic Bible agrees with the Septuagint, so that's kind of interesting. Yes. Um, Instead of the Masoretic saying perfect every time, which obviously no person would think they're perfect. So um, it kind of doesn't make any sense that he's depressed and saying, am I perfect? Because any any normal person, you know, with mental fortitude realizes they're not perfect. Um, uh, how does the Septuagint? Uh, let me see here. I'm going yeah. to chapter nine. See, it says where it starts talking about, am I? Uh, 21. Yeah, let's see here. For though I should seem righteous, my mouth will be profane, and though I should seem blameless. So the RSV Catholic Bible and the Septuagint here both say blameless. I shall be proved perverse. So basically he's saying, I know I'm not blameless of myself. There's no way I could be blameless of myself. Even when I think I'm being righteous, there, there's always ways that, I, that I'm I could be proved to be perverse for even if I have sinned, I know it not in my being. He's talking about like secret sins, basically that even when we think we're walking righteously, there's always, um, there's always a blemish. Yeah. There's always we're something, human. something we can improve on. Um, so that's basically what he's saying. Even when I seem righteous or I seem blameless to myself, I, 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 I will be proved to be perverse. For even if I sinned, I know it not in my being, but my life is taken away. Wherefore I said, wrath slays the great and the mighty man for worthless, for the worthless die, but the righteous are left to scorn. And for they are delivered into the hands of the unrighteous man. Okay, the Septuagint makes a lot more sense here. For they are delivered into the unrighteous man. He covers the faces of the right, right rulers of the earth. But if it be not he, who is it? But my life is swifter than a post. My days have fled away, and they knew it not. Or again, is there a trace of their path left by ships, or is there one of the flying eagle as it seeks its prey? And if I should say, I will forget to speak, I will bow down to my face and groan. I quake in all my limbs, for I know that you will not leave me alone as innocent." But since I am wicked, why have I not died? For if I should wash myself with snow and purge myself with pure hands, you have thoroughly plunged me into filth, and my garment had abhorred me. For you are not man like me, with whom I could contend that we might come together to right ruling. Uh, would that... Would that he, our mediator, were present and a reprover. Wow, okay, this is really different. This is showing that Yob understands there's a mediator between Allahim and man. So this kind of connects with the New Testament here. Would that mm -hmm. he, our mediator, so he's speaking of a third person, not Yahuwah here, uh, that uh, and a reprover, one yeah. should hear the cause between both, between him and Yahuwah, basically. It says in the Masoretic text, what, what I'm reading, there is no mediator between yeah. us. Of course they would want you to believe that. <laughs> so what, want... how does the Septuagint render it again? Would that he, our mediator, he our, would that he, our mediator, yes. were present, and a reprover, meaning someone that exposes or corrects, one who should hear the cause between both, which is what Yahushua does in heaven between, you know, even on the day of judgment, he's going to kind of be our defense lawyer, you could say, between the father and us. His, his uh, without blemish lifestyle is the only thing that saves us. So so that, that kind of connects to the Brit Hadashah there. Let him remove his rod from me and let not his fear terrify me. So shall I not be afraid, but I will speak 
for I am not thus conscious of guilt. So this gives a more realistic idea of what's going on here. Ayub realizes, Job realizes he's never without sin in himself, which you can see in 1 John. Um, no man is without sin, no woman is without sin, no person is completely 100% without sin. Um, and for us to believe that, we are deceiving our own selves. So Ayub obviously is not going to deceive him his own self. Um, and so this is what is going on right now. He realizes that there's secret sins he doesn't know about, that, that to Yahuwah, we're always going to be perverse you know, in a way of ourselves, we're always going to be looked at as there is blemish in us. And there's always going to be sins that we don't even know about that Yahuwah, you know, unless we repent of them, we have to worry about being judged for them. So unless, unless we constantly repent and ask for his forgiveness, ask for the son's forgiveness, even for hidden sins that we don't know about. Um, and this, this is a concept you can find in, in the book of Enoch. It talks about it. Those that are unrepentant will not be in the kingdom. Um, constantly it's talked about in, in, in scripture. So this is definitely not a foreign concept. Um, and so there's a lot. I see a lot of difference in the Septuagint in this chapter. There's there's a lot of difference. One's talking about a mediator where the Masoretic text says there's not a mediator, where it would seem like Job has no idea that there's a mediator, which doesn't make logical sense since um, – you know, the Messianic scriptures, I would think, you know, at some point in time, Ayub is revealed, it, it's revealed to him who the mediator is, if it hasn't already, which it seems like in the Septuagint, he already realizes there's a mediator. So, um, yeah, so um, also I noticed the difference between uh, when he talks about the righteous and what happens to the righteous, they are um, not rightly ruled by the wicked, basically, in this one verse here, it says, um, never rightly ruled by the it wicked. It says, um, where does it say in verse 24, I think, for they are delivered into the hands of the unrighteous man. He covers the face of the judges of the earth, but if it be not he, who is it? So basically, he's using the concept of sometimes Yahuwah can allow stuff to happen like that because of our hidden sins that maybe we haven't repented of, or maybe we don't realize that we're opening a door. So he's allowing the wicked to not rightly rule us. Um, I think that's what he's talking about there. Um, and then talks about the worthless die, but the righteous are left to scorn. That's probably referring to the wicked laughing at us, thinking that we're fools. You know, we're, you know, the, the, the righteous are left to scorn, meaning they're laughed at. Um, and it says, um, wrath slays the great and mighty man. Now I'm guessing that's talking about you who is wrath there in verse 22. Um, but so there, there's a lot, Job is talking about a lot in this chapter. A lot of it has to do with the, um, not rightly ruling by the wicked and how the righteous are being treated. Um, a lot of it has to also do with his own perverseness. He realizes he's not, he's not blameless of himself. And um, so it's very, I thought those were the two big differences I caught was blameless versus perfect. Um, Septuagint has blameless uh, and the Septuagint mm -hmm. talks, talks about there is a mediator, even Job in his time, which is way before the messianic um, writings of the prophets were even written. He understood there was a mediator between him and Yahuwah. Um, so it seems like something would have been written or revealed to him in a dream who the Messiah was going to be because he's talking about a mediator. And so he would have had to, that would have had to been revealed to him by the father at some point. Um, so then talks about should call and should not hearken. I believe that he has listened to my voice. Let him not crush me with a dark storm, but let him. And then also the part of this chapter two goes along with what Yahuwah has done. He uh, he shakes the pillars of earth. I think uh, uh, Shushana's translation says the foundation or the earth was shook. Um, let's see here. It talks about uh, if see. one what will. Verse is that? Yeah, let me see here. Um, verse six. Who shakes the earth out of its place and its pillars tremble, it says in the Catholic 
Yeah, that's what it says. Well, it says columns. Yeah. It still so, shakes the earth out of its place and its columns tremble. Yeah, basically. That's close. You know, yeah, Job is trying to say, like, who is like Yahuwah? Yahuwah can shake the earth out of its place. He can, mm -hmm. you know, he's the one that stretched, stretched out the heavens alone. Um, he can remove mountains. He can, right. he's all powerful. So who is a man, a mortal, fallible man, to think that he is righteous before Elohim, righteous of himself? So th this, this is what this chapter is kind of talking about, a lot of it. And it's pretty much, there's a lot of stuff. So you have him talking about how Yahuwah created the earth. He kind of gives some aspects of the creation that we don't see in Genesis. Um, and he's also talking about his own faults. And then he talks about the um, not, not righteous judgment by the wicked on earth. The judges on earth are not righteously judging the cause. And, um, you know, he's pleading for a mediator between him and Yahuwah because he cannot take any more of, you know, Yahuwah. He feels like Yahuwah is, like, pushing him into more unrighteousness, kind of like he feels like Yahuwah is going to give him into a reprobate mind almost is what I kind of get the idea of. He's, like, afraid. Yes. That, um, that he's, like, he's, like, he's good. Even when I try to purge my heart, I feel like you're throwing me into dirt. You know, spiritually speaking, he's talking yeah. about, you know, he's trying to cleanse if his I heart. Washed myself with snow water and mm -hmm. cleanse my hands with soap, then you would plunge me into a ditch and my garments would abhor me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what's interesting, too, I noticed is the um, verse nine talks about Orion in, uh, in, um, in the Catholic Bible it says in verse nine, who made the bear? It's probably talking about one of the constellations that represents the bear. And Orion, the Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. So it's talking about like all the probably treasuries of the stars and the firmament and all that, all the constellations. Who makes the Pleiades? The Septuagint even talks about the Pleiades, which is kind of interesting. Arcturus. Yeah, here in the uh, Masoretic, it's nothing like that. It says, who made Ash, Cassil, and Kima? Mm. Who knows who they are? They are. Yeah, I know I know what the Pleiades is, definitely from watching science fiction and all that. Oh, can... yeah, we know who, what the Pleiades are. We know yeah. what, they're, what Orion is. Orion, Arcturus. Arcturus, <laughs> I've heard of, too. You hear that's probably talking about the stars and the constellations. Yeah. So he's actually, he's going through stuff in Genesis. We don't even get in, in, in uh, bearer sheets. He's actually going through a, a lot of the other secrets of, of the, of the creation that we don't know about. And that that's probably hinting that he must've known some apocryphal literature possibly because he's talking about stuff that's not even mentioned in our modern version of Genesis. Because Genesis doesn't talk about the constellations, doesn't talk about, you know, uh, doesn't talk about Arcturus, the chambers of the south, it doesn't really mention. So it seems like the bear or Orion. He might be quoting from Enoch in some point. I would have to go back to the book of Enoch, but he might be getting some of this from Enoch, possibly. Because um, I know Enoch, historically, the Ethiopian Enoch predates Job by a good bit. Uh, even, oh, absolutely. So it's very possible. Enoch was before the flood, way before. See here, great things beyond understanding. Mark, um, verse 10 kind of reminds me of Jeremiah 29, 13, where it says, who does great things beyond understanding and marvelous things without number like that idea. Let me reveal to you things that you do not understand and things you have not known. Um, Jeremiah 29, 13, I think yeah. says that. Um, let me see here if I can kind of find that really quick. Um, let me see here. I will reveal to you wondrous things, things that you have not known. I will. Yeah. Feel. That's in my song. Uh, miracles. Wondrous things. Yeah, it comes from Jeremiah or Isaiah. I'm not sure which. 
You have Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Yeah. And I notice there's even a difference in the Septuagint in that verse, where instead of call, it says cry to me, which is kind of interesting. I was reading it the other day. I was like, yeah. oh, that's interesting, but it's a little bit stronger. Let's see here. So Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, it's probably the chapter numberings is a little off in the Septuagint. Let me just see here. Yeah. Here we go. Um, oh, that's weird. Okay. Uh, see here if I can figure that out from by the love what chapter and numbering the Septuagint has it versus because I know sometimes they they have it like a little bit off. Let me see here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Jeremiah thirty three three, Brenton Septuagint cried to me. And I will answer you, and I will declare to you great and mighty things which you know not. So yeah. that seems seems to be like pretty close to Job nine ten. There, pretty pretty similar. Yes, and the um, Masoretic says, "Call unto me, and I shall answer you, and show you great and inaccessible matters which you have not known." Yeah. So let's see here. Is there anything we didn't mention about this chapter? To, to cheer. Okay. Talks about they see no tube. They go like swift skiffs of reed, like an eagle swamp swooping on the prey. My days are swifter. So now he's comparing his days. Now he's kind of like, there's a lot of. Um, parallels in the end of this chapter to King Solomon's writings in Ecclesiastes, where he talks about, you know, the days of men are few, you know, they're gone, like the, the, like the blow of wind and stuff like that. So it seems like that's what he's talking about here towards the end. He talks about my days have gone past me. They're swifter than a runner in verse 25. So it, it seems like a lot of what Solomon just feels like is, you know, just vanity, like our toil under the sun, our, our, our life on this Eretz right now is just vanity, is uselessness. And that's kind of how Ayub is feeling right now. I feel like that's, he's like, eh, Absolutely. my days have fled from me, you know, they're, you know, it's futile kind of, you know, that's kind of like what he feels like. Alihim will turn back his anger the helpers of Rahab bowed beneath him. So that's kind of interesting. Instead of Rahab, the ISR does a little bit better than that. I think it talks about wickedness. Um, verse 13 of that chapter. Let me see. Job 9, 13. This is where it gets really weird. This one. Sometimes a Masoretic text will put a name where it's just supposed to be talking about um, people that are wicked. Uh, let's see here. For it had, for if he has turned away his anger, the whales under heaven have stooped under him. What? The Septuagint's talking about whales. Whoa. Where is that? Uh, Job nine thirteen. Okay, that's a lot different. Uh, what? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh. Whales, okay, kytos, um, huge fish, gaping for prey, whale. That's what the Greek lexicons tell him here. Strong's from the Greek. Probably the base of G5490, Cosma, <laughs> a huge fish as gaping for prey, whale. I mean, that's possible you could have whales in the Waters above the waters, I'm guessing, you know, you can kind of have that somehow. No. I don't know. No, not above the permanent. Um, well, this this one doesn't, this, this has nothing to do with whales in uh, the Masoretic. It says, Yahuwah does not turn back his displeasure. The helpers of pride stoop under him this does, doesn't make much sense yeah. it, uh, I, I 
rather read the Septuagint. Yeah, it's it's very interesting that it's talking about <laughs> whales that are under the heavens. Interesting, I like. Like, I wonder, like, how much under the heaven if it's talking about the sea or... In the sea. Uh, probably the, yeah, probably the They're abyss. They're not floating through the atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> Whales under heaven have stooped under him. It's interesting. So that's, that's another difference. I didn't even mean to try to find that difference. That just came out of nowhere. Uh, I am innocent. I cannot answer him. I must appeal mercy to my accuser. If I summon him and he answered me, I do not believe that he listened to my voice. So basically, Ayub's feeling right now like Yahuwah is not going to have mercy on him. That Yahuwah's, that Yahuwah's arm is kind of like short to save. Um, have you ever he, felt that way? Like yeah. you've done something and he's not going to have mercy on you? I have. Yeah, me too. For he crushes me with a tempest and multiplies my wounds without cause. He will not let me get my breath, but fills me with bitterness. If it is a contest of strength, he is the strong one. If it is a matter of right ruling, who can summon him? And then it goes to, uh, though I am innocent, my own mouth would condemn me. So that's talking about mm -hmm. speaking guile and all that. Uh, I am blameless i do not know myself i loathe my life okay so now it's talking about he's hating his life although i pray for he destroys both the blameless and the wicked which is i mean true to a sense uh true to a sense that he he destroys the blameless and the wicked uh if the blameless turns from his way i can see him destroying the blameless um if he become a blameless person becomes wicked, that's 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 the sense. He could just be talking about that both the blameless he, and he tries and, both the blameless and the wrong. Mm -hmm. I I think that's the truth of matter of the matter. Yeah. He doesn't destroy, but he tries. I become afraid of my suffering, for I know you will not hold me innocent. I shall be condemned. Verse 29, when, why then I, do I labor in vain? If I wash myself with soap and cleanse my hands with leer. So he's starting to go to a dangerous territory right now. Yeah. He's starting to... Yeah, he's starting to go to almost the idea that it's it's useless being obedient. He's he's kind of like in that little gray area there that if he doesn't mm -hmm. he doesn't pick himself up he could start falling into that area of not caring anymore because I read something in um, Malachi the other day where the the Israelites that were apostate would say to themselves it is useless to obey Yahuwah's law it's a vain thing and so he's starting to almost go he's not there yet he's kind of like tiptoeing there he's kind of like. He's kind of like falling into, um, because of his depression, he's allowing himself to get get to the point to almost feel like it's useless falling. And you have you that. ever been there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, see? Yeah. What chapter is it's this in there? The um, Job chapter 9, verse... Oh, thank you. I think I, I was like referring to, let's see here, verse uh, 29 to 31. Basically, I, I shall we, be. Yep. I think we've all been there. I mean, I know I've been there. Doug's been there. Yes. It, it's um, is discouraging. But yeah. then when we look at a man like Job, I am that that was in the same place as we've been. That's encouraging. Because we know that Ayub has a place in the kingdom. Of course, Ayub didn't know at this time that he did. He felt just as yeah. awful yeah. as we feel sometimes. Yeah, back then, too, they didn't have the full realization of the resurrection. We have to remind ourselves Oh, oh, he did. He did know the resurrection because he talked about 
when he comes up in in the end, you know, he yeah. speaks of it. Yeah. So he he knew of the resurrection, and by the end of the book of Job, he knows that he is going to be in it. Yeah. Because Yahuwah talks to him. Job has a nice ending. Yeah. 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 So the things I could take from today's reading is uh, we should always humble ourselves and realize we are mortal. Yahoo is not. Yahusha is not. And whenever we think, if we ever think we're, we're right and he's wrong, we should always remind ourselves of what um, Romans says and uh, let every man be found a liar and let Yahuwah be true. Yeah. So we should always take to heart what Ayub is talking about because a lot of what he's saying here is true. A lot of it is we think we're blameless and then there's times that there's hidden sins we don't even know about. And yeah. that's, you know, so a lot of this is we can take this, apply this to our lives, our daily walk in Messiah Yahushua, um, remind ourselves that we should always be repenting because there's always something to repent of. Even if you're repenting of, uh, you know, of hidden sins that the father knows that you don't. Um, so. And he tries us to the point where we really feel like it's, it's going to destroy me. Yeah. Yeah. He, Fiery he, trials. Yeah. We're he, talking. he flogs us a lot, a lot of times to discipline us because he loves us. So he has to flog us. He has to, reprove us with his rod and that's kind of what job was talking about towards the end there was that he couldn't take his reproof anymore it was too harsh and and uh he he felt like the 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 flogging with you who his rod was too much for him um so yeah the, this is a great reminder to realize that his discipline is uh for a, a two reason Yahuwah disciplines us because he loves us, because he wants us to grow and not be complacent. And so if if you guys didn't get anything else from today, hopefully you got uh, not. I shouldn't say hope. I expect you at least got that concept of uh, it. We should not scorn his discipline. We should not. Uh, you know, we should always try to keep that in our mind that uh, his discipline has a purpose. It's a great purpose and uh, we should, we should, you know, we need to accept his discipline even in tough times. So um, sometimes it's not even discipline. This was a mm -hmm. test. Yeah. It, it came from Satan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was nothing that I did. No, Satan he doesn't wanted that. to test him. Uh, Ayub doesn't. Ayub didn't know that because, just like us, he doesn't see the spiritual world um, because of because of the veil. There's a veil between the heavenly realm and the earthly realm that we live on, and we can't see certain things. So. Yeah. Um, that whole conversation you see in the beginning of Job, those of, uh, have been with us for this journey through the book of Ayub so far. Um, Ayub didn't even realize the whole conversation that Satan and Yahuwah had in chapters one to two. He doesn't realize that. He, he thinks that Yahuwah is um, disciplining him for a, a hidden sin, which, you know, for most of us is a safe assumption on ourselves, uh, you know, examination on ourselves to think think of that because we don't realize what's going on with satan in the heavenly realm he's always accusing us and stuff like that so you know that's that's another thing to realize is there's always um there's always a, a accuser up there and putting false accusations on us and sometimes yahuwah wants to really see and prove us and try us to see if we can handle the fire 
see if we can handle the re refining of the silver and the gold. So, yeah, that's all I can add to this. Uh, it, it was definitely uh, a lot more in this chapter than I thought we were going to get into, but it was, it was a really important chapter. It, it deals with the creation. It deals with uh, what Job was feeling like we feel a lot of the times, and we feel like sometimes it's useless, and sometimes we get really depressed to the point where it, you know, we, we get doubt into, you know, is this worth it to, to be in this walk? And uh, sometimes the devil screws with our head and makes us sure think, oh, it's, it's not worth it. Oh, da, da, da. Uh, you know, you're wasting your life doing this or whatever type of thoughts he'll put in our head. Um, so this was a very important chapter. This kind of I, th I think this will help a lot of us, uh, us four who are here today that, that was reading this and for brothers and sisters watching this. So thank you for joining us. And if you're interested um in fellowshipping with us please contact um my sister shushana at shushana r at gmail.com contact me at um douglas boninsegna so my first and last name at gmail.com and um you can also contact us on through facebook on multiple group pages we have we have the for the lost .com. Um, page on Facebook. We have um, our group page on Facebook, the Awakened by Yahua Assembly. You can uh, look for that on Facebook. So if you just want to comment on the comments, you know, of this video and reach out to us, that's fine too. Um, so please like, share, and subscribe. All of you that will be watching us on YouTube. And thank you, my brother um, Isaiah Israel. Um, thank you for subscribing recently. You were my 36th subscriber recently, so thank you very much um, for supporting our channel. Um, so I uh, hope, hope to talk to you soon. Um, so thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And I, I expect, and my prayer would be for today, that you guys got something out of this study, this very important chapter here from IU, Job chapter 9, and also earlier today, whoever joined us earlier um, for Bereshit Genesis 29. I feel like those two chapters today, there was a lot of meat in them, a lot of importance in them. So thank you very much for joining us. Have a great rest of your Shabbat, brothers and sisters. Shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> All right. And we're stopped the live stream.